in the sort of I say penultimate penultimate chapter of the Fear Machine Muslim edition there was one of the uh, the most fearsome the scariest villains foes antagonists his name was Jihadi John Jihadi John yes you see it here it says here one of the worst terrorists of modern times was a British citizen here's what happened now Jihadi John is something very important to consider because this is how the, the media fear machine, fear machine works best this is what they've been doing for years this is what they still do and it, it's it's creating these characters of people I mean there's many ISIS executioners out there I'm sure but uh, obviously think about Jihadi John and why they latched onto him so hard and really made us all terrified was because you know he was one of us he was a British citizen and Jihadi John wasn't like some street thug nutter in the first place I mean, Jihadi John was um, semi respectable from what I remember but the name Jihadi John was important like why Jihadi John well, because John is just so generic John is your neighbour next door John is just some guy it's just John John it's nothing particularly you know, no offence to all the Johns out there but there's nothing particularly um, exotic about John nothing particularly out of the out of the no, that's not you know, removed from normal about John John's John you know that's why it's Jihadi John John could be your neighbour he could be any one of us it could be Jihadi John that's what like that's what really sent people pot here going wow they live amongst us don't they the enemy was within one day just a regular British citizen the next day flying off to Syria and decapitating people insane and also terrifying and you should always remember how they sort of label people and um, how often people get put in the in the press in order for you to be sort of scared or concerned and the label and the names that they give them and how much they hype up their importance to like the bigger picture Jihadi John's such a good example like he was the scariest thing about one of the scariest organizations that we've seen for a long time like ISIS are like you think about their influence and and how much media attention they got um, you know you, you put them up there like you ain't seen nothing like that since the Nazis probably like with ISIS I'd argue like ISIS are crazy They're like ISIS is coming <coughs> but now ISIS are no more. Uh, yeah, Jihadi John. Jihadi John, the poster boy of the fear machine, you could say. They loved him. They loved him. The media loved him. All of them loved him. They loved him. Couldn't wait to talk about Jihadi John a bit more, speculate about Jihadi John. You know. Show. Show what supporters of Jihadi John look like. Anyway. In the summer of 2014, a shock video was released featuring the beheading. American journalist James Foley at the hands of a masked ISIS terrorist who spoke with a British accent like all great villains over the course of the next year there were many more videos of the same menacing killer carrying out more bloodthirsty acts of violence spouting out ISIS propaganda and cursing the UK and America that man was called Mohammed Mwazi I've always known as Jihadi John which just slips off the tongue so well Jihadi John what a snappy name. And he became one of the most notorious terrorists of modern times until his death in November 2016. A new Channel 4 documentary, The Hunt for Jihadi John, will explore the story of how a British boy grew up to become a caliphate killer. And the film by Richard Kerbage and Anthony Wonk, or Wonky, I don't know, is he Wonky? Interviews both American and British intelligence officers about the case and also speaks to the victims and their families about the tragedy and loss they have faced because of NYC. So, that was on 20th May. So it's already been out. So you can give that a watch. It's already out, mate. And who, who was Jihadi John? Well, and was he was born in Kuwait in 1988, but moved to the UK when he was six and lived in St. John's Wood. His former English teacher, Joe Shooter, appears in the film and says over footage of a teenager and was he, he wasn't a particularly noticeable person. He wasn't vocal or particularly aggressive. He was like a passenger. He was much more of a follower rather than a leader. Well, that's perfect person to join ISIS I suppose 
He went on to gain a degree in information systems at the University of Westminster and was engaged. However, he started being profiled by the UK security forces for suspicious behaviour after he made trips to Somalia and Tanzania to meet with suspected terrorist groups. The relationship with his fiancée ended and he moved back to Kuwait and became a salesman at an IT company and was regarded by his boss as the best employee the company ever had. Maybe that speaks highly of Jihadi John or maybe that speaks volumes about the about the low quality workforce that company has. Anyway, however, according to the documentary, he had issues with his teeth, which forced him back to the UK for dental work. He was searched and held and refused entry back to Kuwait, but somehow escaped and made it to Syria where he joined ISIS. Who did him? Why was he killed? Well, we know who he killed. I don't, know, I don't want to go into who he killed. Why was he called Jihadi John? <laughs> It was the hostages who first named Enwazi and the three other brutal ISIS captors as the Beatles. As a coping mechanism, says former hostage Federico Henin in the film. It was one thing that they will never have control over, the name I give you. Yes, but then it turns into kind of, uh, fair enough for him, like, but it turned into a monster of his own, like the ISIS Beatles, Jihadi John. And the media can't help themselves with this kind of shit. They were named John, Paul, Ringo and George, as all four men had native British accents. And they were the people who kidnapped Federico and Motka and Haynes. The name Jihadi John was used on August the 20th, 2014 in The Spectator in a piece titled Jihadi John. A very British export. And then the rest of the UK media picked up the same name. As they would. How was it identified? After the first execution video was released, the manhunt began to identify him. As very little could be seen as he dressed in black, only showing his eyes and his hands. MI5, Scotland Yard and CIA had only a few things to go on. He had a London Southern English accent and his skin tone was consistent with African or South Asian descent. The veins on his hands were mapped. Voice recognition technology was used and even a topographer was brought on board to identify possible locations for the killing videos from the uh, rock formation in the background was suggested it was in the hills of South Syrian city Raqqa. That's a lot of effort to find out who Jihadi John was. It's like how how much, but then I guess if he has family in the UK, then um, you know gives gives everyone an opportunity to be spied on. It's fine, isn't it? On February 26, 2015, the Washington Post identified the perpetrator as Mohammed Mwazi, a 26-year-old British man. How was he killed? Mwazi was eventually tracked down by the US and UK security forces in Syria given away by the shape of his beard and his walk and killed by <laughs> killed by a drone strike like so what security force is probably using a drone to try, imagine that, if, imagine you've had the same beard and walk as a, a wanted terrorist and you got accidentally drone bombed like, what the f what <laughs> don't nick other people's swagger Prime Minister at the time David Cameron stated the US and Britain had been working hand in glove around the clock to track him was his location and that the drone strike was an act of self-defense. Well, they were, weren't they? <laughs> what happened to the other British Beatles? Alexander Koti and El Shafi Aishaik Aishik are in Kurdish custody after being caught in Syria in early 2018. The pair have since been stripped of their British citizenship. Oh, a lot of people have, haven't they? And there are ongoing discussions about where they should face trial in the UK, in The Hague or in America the death penalty could be used. The final member was Ayn Leslie Davis, who was arrested in Turkey on November 13, 2015. He was tried in Turkey in 2016 over allegations that he was plotting a terror attack there and was later convicted of terrorism offences by a Turkish court and sentenced to seven and a half years in prison. Jihadi John. His legacy lives on in a documentary form. Like I said, they... They love these kind of figures. They really do. That's the media that the media that is. It's just it's kinda of like Mwah! they love to give them a snappy name and you know, constantly constantly you know, give you updates on all the horrible things they've done. And the speculation, the amount of speculation they give. Oh, is he doing this? Well maybe he was from here. He only suspected being this. How was he radicalized? Well, here's ten experts we interviewed upon radicalization. One of them's gonna have a good theory, I'm sure. They love this stuff. They love it. And now, you know, 
just not, there's not enough Islamic extremism going on at the moment. So, you know, they've got to talk about something else, which is really bothersome for them. They're like, no, no. So they're just going to talk about nonsense all the time, I suppose. You know, I mean, there's plenty of stuff going on out there for people to be terrified of. But, you know, they'd rather talk about, I don't know, milkshakes and diversity classes. Yeah, this is, this is the world we live in. That's great. But it best be known that if Al Qaeda 2.0 is, is going to really rise up at the Phoenix from the Flames, or another massive, you know, terrifying terrorist caliphate unit, or whatever the hell you want to call it, emerges, like it, uh, <clears throat> the media will love it they'll love it and uh, and you'll see all the kind of all the stuff they're currently talking about will probably just be forgotten about because you know this is the real fear machine this is this is this is the juicy stuff this is the stuff that really scares the shit out of people and they love it and they love it and you love it too everyone loves a good horror story don't know. 